Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and this is Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, the video series in which Herbert Erpaderp, that's me, is asked. And being that I'm the only Herbert Erpaderp that I know of, I guess I'll begin answering questions. Ratto said, Is there a truth behind the rumours about Derptopian Cosmos Marines and Crayons? The truth is that Derptopian crayons are the most delicious crayons in the entire universe, so it's no wonder they're Derptopian Cosmos Marines' favourite writing implement and snack. Hetz is gonna Hetz said, since it's your 155th episode of Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, are you in the mood to build an Australian K9 Thunder 155mm self-propelled howitzer? Not especially. Modern equipment just doesn't really do much for me. I would build it if somebody sent it to me, but I don't think I would go out of my way to buy one for myself. Trekan Belovich said, Would you put a KV-85 turret on an IS-1 hull? Sure, that would be so rebellious, people would be all like, ooh, what a rebel. By which I mean, isn't the KV-85 turret pretty much what they did use on the IS-1? I'm pretty sure that's the case. I guess I could Google it to confirm, but I'm too lazy, so maybe I'm wrong. I would do it either way though. That random Kriegsman said, What is your opinion on early war tanks? For example, Panzer II, 7TP, Mark VI-B, etc. I think they're quite interesting. I wouldn't want to ride one into battle, though I guess when they were designed, they probably weren't seen as so death trappy, I guess. I'm not sure that's ever going to be an issue for me, I don't foresee myself going into battle at all, and especially not in early war tanks. I do like that there were so many different designs and ideas in early tanks, it makes for a lot of interesting modelling opportunities. Spanish Boy said, Does the glue god have children? Like Zeus having, I don't know, thousands of kids? Like is Superglue the glue god's son? This is a mystery, it's unknown at this time, and it may be unknowable. I would say Superglue and the Drilling Fairy and various other entities that we know of are all independent and not related, at least not in a family way. I just don't see how Superglue could be related to the glorious and mighty Glue God. That would be crazy. Or maybe its craziness is what would make it a good story. I don't know, I'm too lazy to think of it. Hetzer's Gunner Hetzer said, Have you seen the new Chainsaw Man anime yet? I have not. I'm not into anime at all, so I had no idea that Chainsaw Man even existed, or that there was a new one. Spanish Boy said, Second Great Emu War? Sure, why not? Actually, I wonder if emus are still considered a pest. I've no idea. Anyway, maybe this time, they should send more than three men with a couple of machine guns and a truck. Spanish Boy said, Have you been to the Australian Outback? And if so, was it fun? I haven't, and I can't imagine it actually being much fun. Conditions there are, understandably, quite harsh, so it doesn't seem like a fun place to be, at least not for myself. I know there are some people who love it in the outback, but I can tell without going there that it's not for me. Trekan Belovich said, Is there a certain rivalry between Australia and New Zealand? I guess there is a sort of rivalry, mostly around things like sports. There's banter and so forth, but it's not like a serious thing. New Zealand is our bro, and we're their brew. It's kind of like when you've got a little brother. You can pick on them, but you'll kick the ass of anybody else who tries it. That sort of thing. Ratto said, What is your exercise routine? This space intentionally left blank. Hmm, I guess that might work a bit better in a text format. Anyway, I don't really have an exercise routine. I'm really, really bad at being consistent with things like exercise, mostly because I just hate doing it. When my sister lived a bit closer, we would often go on walks and she would kind of force me into that sort of consistency, because I just can't seem to do it myself. I do try to go walking at a minimum, but now that it's coming into the hotter part of the year, I have less and less motivation to do that. I found basketball, or at least shooting hoops, I don't really play the game, but I do find it to be one of the more enjoyable physical exercises, mostly because you can gamify it. I mean, it is a game. I find I need some sort of gamification to make exercising less awful, rather than just moving for the sake of moving. I still don't really feel a lot of motivation to do basketball either. I never get that good feeling after exercising that people are always talking about, so while I do know that it's good for me, it's really hard to motivate myself and have the consistency required for there to be a routine. 
If I'm trying to lose weight, I actually find it easier to do so through just eating less and better. Obviously though, physical movement and such is good for the health, so I try to do that too. I'm just not consistent with it. In the YouTube comment section of last month's Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb, Hampton Musk said, Why you always paint in separate videos? And try some small Zvezda 100 scale kits. Building and painting in one video just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. If I was to try and build and paint every model for every video, I would effectively be doubling the amount of work I have to do, actually probably more than doubling it, while ruining painting as a hobby for myself by forcing myself to have something painted every single week. That in exchange for, well, not nothing, but definitely not enough. My main reason for not wanting to do that is time, as a commenter said. I know for some, it's hard to see people making videos on YouTube as anything but a content robot, but I really don't want to spend all of my time making videos. I'd like to do other things too, and even if I did want to spend all of my time making videos, it would be a pretty poor choice, and combining building and painting videos would make it an even worse choice. It would take so much more time, and I guess I could reduce the frequency of the videos to less than every week, but I like doing them weekly. And it's probably better for a channel of my size to be consistent and have something every week rather than every now and then. And if I had to paint every model I build, the videos would be very infrequent indeed. Not only would it take a lot more time, I'd also get less revenue. A build video and a painting video are obviously two videos, so that's two lots of revenue. Combining them would be, you guessed it, one set of revenue for double the work, and that just doesn't seem like a good choice. Also I guess you probably haven't bothered to look, but I have built a lot of Zvezda 100th scale kits, and I do like them. But things happened in the world, and I figured maybe I would just not build Zvezda kits anymore. I haven't tried, but I do wonder if sanctions might make it a bit harder to get Sylvester kits nowadays. Oh well. Martin Gotham said, I recently got an airbrush. Any tips for a beginner? I guess I have some basics, like thin your paints appropriately, that can take a little bit of experimentation to figure out what works for you and your particular airbrush. But you kind of figure that out as you go, and eventually it becomes kind of second nature. Keep the airbrush clean. You don't have to worry about the external, non-moving parts of it so much, unless you want to. You might notice that mine end up pretty messy on the outside, but the inside is the important part. Not letting paint sit and dry in the airbrush is probably the most obvious one. I like to at least run some water through it when changing colours or if I just need to stop for more than a couple of minutes. You don't have to pull it apart and give it a thorough cleaning between colours or anything like that, that's a bit extreme, but it seems to me that keeping things clean as you go just makes life a bit easier. I would also say don't expect it to immediately or automatically make your paint jobs any better. It seems like some people just have this idea that an airbrush is a magical thing that automatically makes things great. They're probably the same people who think that airbrushes are cheating for some reason. They're not, it's just a tool. And it does help, obviously, that's what tools do, especially with getting nice smooth coats, and it does make things like soft edges between colours really easy to do, but I think its main function is saving time. It's probably obvious that it's so much quicker to base coat a tank nice and smoothly with an airbrush than it is with brushes. But as with any tool, if you want to be good with it you'll probably need to practice. Fortunately, with an airbrush it's actually kind of fun. Um, don't bend the tip, is that one obvious? It's pretty important though, so don't bend the tip. Also, try to avoid scratching the internal surfaces when you clean it. You can get those little cleaning kits that are kind of little brushes on twisted metal handles, kind of like a bottle brush but smaller, and they sell those for cleaning airbrushes, but I wouldn't really recommend using them for that. Unless you're really careful, you'll probably scratch things. I do, however, use them to scrub dried paint off the tip if I need to. You could also use an old toothbrush for that. Obviously do it carefully though. I've got some interdental toothbrushes that I've been using for cleaning the inside of my airbrush when it needs it, and they seem to work pretty well. Anyway, I guess just basically look after it, don't expect it to do all the work for you, and have fun with it. I tried, but I couldn't think of any other tips, though I'll probably think of something great to say right after I finish editing this. That's just how it works. 
Anyway, that's it for the questions this month. Let's check out some of the models that have been shared over on the Discord server. First up, Lutantan shared this little diorama that seems to be called Scorched Earth, and I can see why. It's really cool. I'm not really sure of the manufacturer of this puma, but it's in 100th scale, so it's probably a Flames of War kit. This is really well done, which is probably stating the obvious. You can almost smell the burntness. Excellent work. Peter Enko shared this glorious and mighty little tractor. This is a 72nd scale Zetor, Zetor 25A from Planet Models. You can tell I know what it's called and wasn't just reading what Peter Renko wrote by the way I knew exactly how to say it. You're a liar, Herbert! Yeah. Anyway, I think this is a really cool little tractor and I'm tempted to pick one up for myself if I can find one, even though I know there's photo etch. Very cool. These last couple of pictures, if you couldn't tell, feature the tractor on a little diorama. Very nice work, keep it up. Ratto has shared this trio of colourful Landschknecht ogres. By colourful I mean they're nicely bright and coloured, but not obnoxiously so, if that makes sense. This is some very very nice work, and for those interested, these are 28mm scale models from Mom Miniatures. And here's a pair of German vehicles from Trekan Beluvich, a King Tiger and an SDKFZ 251. I'll let you guess which one is which. Both of these are 15mm scale plastic models from Battlefront. Trekan says he scraped the detail off the tank's right hull to make it a bit different. I do like that. Simple things like that can work really well as a way to tell tanks apart on the gaming table. Also, in the last picture, it almost looks as though the commander, I assume, is about to give that gunner a really good smack over the head. He probably deserves it. Awesome work. And that's it for the models, and indeed, ask a herpet herpet for this month. It will of course be back next month, so you've only got like, just short of a month to get your questions in. Thanks to everybody who shares their models, even if they're not shown in these videos, it's always really inspiring to me. Go check Discord if you want to see more interesting modelling work. Also, of course, thank you to the folks who ask questions, and a big thank you to my patrons. Your support is truly helpful, and I appreciate you all. If you want to see more sensible shenanigans, like what you can see in the background video, come check out my live stream over on Twitch, the link to which you can find in the description, as well as links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, have a fantastic day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.